To continue on with our talk about women in the workplace at Harley-Davidson, the next thing that we're going to be going over is the training and procedures. The three things that we're going to be going over are the problems that we see at Harley-Davidson, the importance of addressing these issues and what that means for the customer, and also the training itself. The biggest problem that we see at Harley-Davidson is actually that when people think of our company, they don't typically think about women. Um, in fact, we already know that we have the male demographic, but if you were to do just even a quick Google search on women at Harley-Davidson, at least your first four um, search results would result in women's fashion, like the clothing line. Um, you would have to do some very serious digging to find anything on actually women working at Harley-Davidson. So, as you can see, women are just not typically associated with Harley-Davidson, at least in the workplace manner. Um, we can see in statistics shown earlier that women are leading in administration but are lacking everywhere else. In fact, if you looked at the engineering and science department, they were behind by at least half, if not more. Um, than the men. So therefore, we just really see that they are not being shown in any other department really other than the administration. And according to a 2009 article from Engineering and Technology, we see women growing as a demographic in STEM, but they're still behind men at an alarming rate. And so that's why it is so important to just get more women associated with the uh, different departments at Harley-Davidson. So therefore, the representation is there, but clearly it's just not enough. We aren't seeing women really anywhere else other than the administration, and so therefore people don't typically asso associate Harley-Davidson with being a female-oriented uh, company. The importance of having the diversity of having women in the workplace is the fact that we really need to just get educated. If we are not educated, then you'll never be able to better yourself, honestly. If you don't know that this is a problem in Harley-Davidson, then you will never be able to fix that problem. So therefore, um, by getting educated, we are able to become a more diverse company, and by becoming a more diverse company, we actually would be able to improve as a company. And actually, uh, Jay Stovall says that diversity leads to a 33% increase in performance, as well as 24% higher revenue growth. So we can see that just by diversifying our workplace, we will already see uh, performance being enhanced. So therefore, really nobody is getting hurt by us having a more diverse workplace by adding more women to our company. Um, if we publicly hire more women, um, it will just show that we are really into having women empowerment, honestly. I mean, it's very important to show women that we care about them, and I think that as a simple psychology trick, if we even just show that we respect women, it's going to lead to more female customers. I mean, we clearly already have the male demographic, so therefore it couldn't hurt for us to push more into our female demographic for customers. I mean, it would only improve our sales and really just make us a company more based in diversity rather than just being about men riding motorcycles, which I think would really make a huge difference in our sales and in our profits every year. Um, as far as the training itself goes, um, once we, the three things that we really need to focus on are identifying prejudice, uh, getting to know our coworkers, and having an open conversation. So let's say that just because of where you come from in life, let's just say that you have um, a diverse background where maybe your culture does not value women as much. I think just identifying that you have that prejudice is going to be more beneficial to you in the long run. I mean, if we are able to identify that prejudice, we are able to really work on that prejudice as a whole, we're really able to work on no longer having that prejudice anymore, which is really what's important about this whole diversity training is just being able to work with our coworkers and not feel like we are necessarily better than them or that they are less than. And that's really what's important to this whole diversity training is just really identifying that you may have that prejudice. So if you, for whatever reason, have a prejudice against women, 
identifying that that prejudice is there is going to make is going to mean a lot more in the long run than just pretending that you don't have that prejudice to begin with. The next thing that we want to do is we really want to get to know our coworkers because let's say that you do have a prejudice against someone, whether it be women or veterans or people of color. I mean, if you identify that you have that prejudice and you decide that you really want to step out of your comfort zone to get to know those people, it can be really beneficial to you and to them because let's say that maybe you didn't necessarily think you had anything in common with them. If you get to know your coworkers, you'd be pleasantly surprised. Maybe you grew up in the same hometown, or maybe you like the same restaurants, or maybe your kids have the same names. Um, you would be able to find really crazy similarities if you just got to know your coworkers, and it would just be really beneficial to you and to them at the same time. And so that's why it really is important even just to get to know our coworkers. It's going to make a world of difference in the world of diversity training. The last thing to do is to have an open conversation. If you have an open conversation with your coworkers, everybody who comes from a different cultural background and has different experiences is then able to talk about those different experiences and bring them into the company. I mean, it's never a bad thing. Surprisingly, maybe you don't have the best opinions on everything. So therefore, if you have that open conversation and you allow for people with different opinions and with different backgrounds to be able to come in and really talk about their feelings and how they think about certain situations, it can really only benefit you and the company in the long run. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is still the training, but more so what we would actually do in the training. Um, I think the biggest thing would be the actual role play part because I think it would really open up a lot of minds. I mean, it would show that, you know, if we have men act as women and women act as men, I think it would show the different biases that women and men have towards each other. And I think seeing that come to light is going to make a world of difference in people's opinions about how we treat each other. The next thing that I would do is I would show the statistics about women in the workplace. And I think that would really just show that there is an alarming rate of not enough women at Harley Davidson. And that would also be just a really important way to just have a physical view of what could possibly be wrong with our company. And I think that the last thing that we really need to do is again just to have an open conversation. So if there is that bias, bringing that to light and having that be addressed so that it no longer can become an issue and be an issue in the workplace. And I think having that out in the open is just going to make for a better environment for everyone. And that's why it's so important to have diversity training, especially for women in the workplace at Harley-Davidson. Thank you.